Hi, my name's Sam Spatero. Welcome to the Relationship Series. And I'm Gina Spatero. And today we are going to be talking about the history of monogamy and the evolution. Um, I think people need to understand a little bit about where monogamy originated from to understand why there might be some implications today. Um, and people need to understand, understand that our ancestors actually were not primitively influenced by monogamy. And their whole thing was one man with multiple wives for a variety of reasons. And, um, you know, childbearing and, um, you know, security within the family and having multiple people to look after children. And... So there wasn't any monogamy when our ancestors were roaming, but centuries after um, and before Christianity, there was a Roman law which prohibited men from having more than one wife. And it's actually kind of funny because they stopped the elite men from accumu accumulating more than one wife. Um, because they were finding that the lower status men were not getting married or having mm -hmm. any significant other. So they stopped it for that reason so that other men were able to access women. And then the West just kind of adopted the monogamous theory and religion as well. So Christianity came into play and kind of adopted that um, relationship pattern. And it's just something we've come to know because we've evolved that way. And I think people need to understand that there's a lot of reasons why we feel and act a certain way in today's relationships innately. No, I, yeah. I agree 100%. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when it comes to monogamy versus non-monogamy, we're going to talk a bit about the science, but also the evolution of it all. And I think really what it comes down to is some key questions that we have. You know, number one, is there something wrong for being attracted to someone else when you're in a relationship? Mm -hmm. And... If someone is unfaithful in a relationship, should they be demonized? Mm -hmm. You know, so there's so many different facets that contribute to this, whether it's societal, religious. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we can get into the religion of it, but I think we should say that for another video. You got some religions where it's one person for life. Some you could have multiple partners. Mm -hmm. So I can understand the confusion behind it. Um, but there has been some key research uh, that's been done. And I think it's really key to talk about some advantages mm -hmm. and maybe some disadvantages of monogamy versus non-monogamy. So some key advantages of monogamy are emotional security. Coming home to someone that you can share all of you with rather than a part of you with is them getting a better understanding of what you need, what you like, what you love who they need to be in order to fill you up emotionally so that you can feel more significant and also contribute more. Because when you're lit up, you want to light up the whole world. Um, and another key uh, advantage would be a lower risk of STDs. And I don't really need to get into <laughs> the science of that. You know, if uh, you're, you know, do you want to get into that part a little bit? Um, I just want to tell you a stat today. So the statistic today is that there is one in two people that are infected. So... So I should ask my wife to get checked no. out. Third point would be financial stability. Imagine this, taking care of one person versus four or five different wives. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely a lot less stressful. So that would be a lot of the advantages. Now here's some of the disadvantages. Boredom, uh, compatibility, complacency, and settling. You know, these are some really key things that you need to really... Um, dig deep and answer some questions. You know, number one, um, you know, are they someone that can fulfill me? Are we compatible? Do we have similar interests? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I think in closing, uh, you know, maybe to stop to think, is there something wrong with you if your partner's cheated? You know, I think really what it comes down to is there's more to this than we can understand. Yeah, and I think like we said in our other video, we need to take the thought of it being taboo to talk about. And we need to take away the shame of it because we need to understand why it's happening. Because I mean, for a lot of the times there is boredom and people become complacent and you need to own that as the partner who is doing that or the partner who is creating the other type of stress. But there's a variety of, you know, uh, implications to all of it, so. Absolutely, and I think in closing, one of the key things I think that we've compiled with mm -hmm. our research is this. 
Whether you're monogamous or non-monogamous, you want to have multiple partners or not, here's a key takeaway I think that we can give some people sure. is sit down, have a talk with a person and see if you share similar values and beliefs. Mm -hmm. You know, why, when you know you're not going to be faithful, why get involved with someone you know yes. is the opposite of what it is you want. So mm -hmm. if you want to be fair to another human being, be open and honest about what yes. you expect, what you want. And that's pretty much all I have to share at this point. Yeah. Um, I would just close with don't ever assume what is right for you is right for your partner because having that assumption will create um, so many, you know, disadvantages with emotional trauma later on. So like Sam said, get real with what you want. Own it. It doesn't matter what you want. Doesn't There's no judgment for what you want, but you can't bring someone into a relationship if your ideals are different because it's all going to surface. Our mission uh, with the relationship series is to give you the tools to navigate your relationship so that it can be a fulfilling one. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Done. Perfect.